Thomas Hunter, and welcome to my talk, Logging, Metrics, and Tracing with Node. All the content from this talk is adapted from a chapter of my recently published book, Distributed Systems with Node. So first, we're going to look at logging. You can sort of think of logging as the console.log of the cloud. And so what exactly is logging? Well, it's a way to extract granular state from a program. Usually, the state ends up resembling well-structured JSON data instead of the random words or objects that you or I might log locally. And so these logs often have an associated severity level, uh, which is used for filtering. So for example, the severity levels that were made popular by NPM are error, warn, info, HTTP, verbose, debug, and silly. And so you can configure an application so that perhaps in production, you're only getting um, you know, maybe messages that are a greater severity than debug, whereas locally you're getting like all messages. So these logs can be written to standard out, they can be written to the file system, or they can even be sent directly over the network by the application. Uh, if you do happen to write them to standard out or file system, you'll probably need some sort of sidecar process that's running, listening, uh, reading those files and piping them over the network. And if you were to send them from, your from the application directly over the network, you know that would increase some um, complexity of the application. However, it would also you know, perhaps streamline the, the delivery of those, those logs. Uh, and the, the reason that it needs to work this way is that we have a central logging service that captures these logs in a, in a global, uh, globally throughout your, all your applications. Uh, and so one of the popular packages for doing this is Winston, and that's what we're gonna look at in these examples. And so here we have a file that creates a Winston instance and then, you know, exports a, a singleton representation of it. So here we're you know, importing the Winston package, creating an instance. And so the level field here, this is saying that we only want to capture info and in greater messages. The format field says that we want this, the output to be in JSON format. Default meta, this represents default properties that are then available on each of the logs. Since we're outputting JSON messages, these are the default fields that'll appear for all logs within this application. So specifically, we're looking at the uh, node environment variable uh, which we're applying to a property called env. And we're also naming the application as profile service and sending it to an attribute called app. And so this is useful so that we can differentiate logs from different uh, environments and different applications within our infrastructure. The transports configuration is defining two different outputs for these logs. And so the first one says that the logs are written to disk at var log node app dot log. And the second one says that they're printed to the console. So we have some uh, pretty common logging conventions used in node applications and, and really non-node node applications as well. And so, you know, perhaps we create a global logger, uh, but we can also have a request specific logger. And so the logger that we saw on the previous screen, that would represent the, the global logger. And so common pattern also is to create a uh, request ID, which is usually like a UUID value, which can then be associated with each one of the logs for a given request. So this example down here, we're requiring the global logger. We're then adding a on request handler to Fastify. And so within each request, we generate a request ID, which is just a random UUID. And then we create a child logger. And so that's a Winston convention for you know, creating a new logger with default properties. In this case, the only default property is the request ID. We then attach that to the request object so we can use it in other requests. And so the final bit of code at the end, that extracts the URL and method from the uh, request object and then actually generates a log. So request.logger.info is a way to create an info message. And so the name of the log is on request. And the two additional properties that we're adding contextually are the URL and method. And so here's an example of another log. Uh, this time we're attempting to save data to a database. Uh, however, a problem has happened. So we uh, we wrap that in a try catch, and then we catch the error, and then log the stack trace. So here we're calling request.logger.error, so of course creating an error message. The name of the message is db persist error, and then we're assigning the error message, the error stack, and even the record ID uh, to that log. That way a developer can go in later and attempt to find out why that message didn't persist. So here's some logging solutions that we can use. A pretty popular one is called the elk stack, and this can be self-hosted or you can even paid companies to host it for you. So that's a combination of the Elasticsearch uh, 
uh, database, the Logstash uh, daemon, and the Kibana graph board uh, graph. And so other alternatives that are paid for include Splunk, uh, Datadog has a logs project, uh, and Sumo Logic as well. So what do these logs actually look like? Well, here's a screenshot of a dashboard from my employer, lob.com. Oh, we're hiring, of course. And so this dashboard here displays a uh, graph of logs that match the query, and then actually the raw logs below it. And so the query at the top of the screen, uh, that's written in KQL, which stands for Kibana Query Language. And that's how I'm uh, querying these logs here. So in this case, I'm looking for logs with a message of handled request and where the status code is at least 500. So that's a way to display all server-side errors. And so here we see that within the last 24 hours, we had six of these 500 errors. And all this data that we're looking at today is time series data and is filtered based on time. So now we're going to look at metrics. And so whereas logs looked at more individual data, uh, metrics will look at aggregate numeric data. So what are, what are metrics? Um, well, again, it's time series data, almost entirely numeric based. It's a way to understand the application's health. And so usually these metrics will have like a name and perhaps some associated tags with them. Tags being key value pairs that can be used for querying. Uh, and that depends on the implementation that you choose. And so this is gonna tell you information that real world benchmarks can't. Uh, this is gonna tell you real world information that benchmarks can't tell you. So a benchmark is like an estimate of how the application will perform. Well, metrics are actual measurements of how the application performs. So it's common to log or to store metrics for things like request throughput, uh, request timing, application memory usage. You can even track uh, the status codes, you know, 500s versus 200s, or perhaps endpoint popularity. You can even track things that aren't necessarily as engineering based, uh, you know, more business things such as how much money is spent, what's the user churn like, are the ads getting clicked, uh, et cetera. And generally, metrics end up being cheaper than logs, both both in the uh, computational cost as well as the uh, transmission cost. So here's some example code. Uh, here we're using the statsd client package and we're creating a new statsd instance. And so as we create that, we pass in some configuration. I'm sort of glossing over the connection details, but in this case, you can see that the prefix for these metrics is my app. And so it's common using this uh, pattern to sort of prefix these metrics with like a name of an application. You then separate the name of these metrics using periods, and then you can sort of define like a hierarchy of requests. And so again, we're adding a Fastify um, middleware. Uh, this time it happens at the on response level. And so we're gonna track the request timing as well as the status code that was received and even the method. And so using this information, we could you know, see the timing that a request takes over, over, over time. So there's a few different metric solutions, not as popular as the logging scene, but there's definitely more than one choice. So one common stack is uh, to use StatsD, which is a daemon for collecting these metrics, Graphite, which is a database for storage, and then Grafana, which is a dashboard. Now the com popular combination is Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, and then finally, we, the Datadog uh, company also has a metrics products product as well. So what do these metrics actually look like? Well, here's a graph. Uh, this is just an example using some, some fake entries. But here we can see in the upper left, you know, we have a, a uh, this is counting the outbound requests. And so we can see like, you know, per second, we have 50 requests from about, you know, 1527 to 1533. On the upper right, we have the outbound request timing. So that's showing us how long a request is taking to actually succeed. And at the bottom, we have a list of the incoming status codes. Or as you can see, we have a long, sad line of 500 error codes and then a burst of 200 error codes. So the very bottom, that's a query that I've written in Grafana to query this data. And so I'm looking at the uh, myapp.request.status.anything metrics. And then I'm just using a, wrapping that in a function that renames the output. And so that actually gives us the bottom graph. And finally, we're gonna look at distributed tracing. And so this allows us to keep track of uh, communications as they cross services. And so what is distributed tracing? Well, it's a way to associate these related requests as they flow through your system. And so, you know, perhaps you have a shallow service and then, you know, more deeper services. A request goes through the shallow one and then it gets sent to deeper ones, which then might get sent to even deeper ones. And so you end up with like a tree structure of requests. Classically, 
you know, visualizing that is a bit difficult. And so that's why we have distributed tracing. And so, you know, at a high level, these different uh, implementations ultimately come up with some sort of request ID, which is like a random value to identify all these requests as they're related. And then depending on the implementation, you even get something called a span ID, which is a way to identify and associate individual request response pairs. And so like as a shallow server communicates with a deeper server, it'll get its own span ID. These IDs are often passed around as HTTP headers. So if you're using a tool such as gRPC, you would need to come up with a different way to pass these headers around. All this information gets sent to a central management service, just like with logging and with metrics. And as I mentioned, it'll allow you to visually uh, see the hierarchy of uh, the request. And so it's useful to see, you know, which service was slow or if a request fails, you know, which service was at fault for that. Uh, and as a bonus, you can actually take that request UUID that's generated by the distributed tracing, you can actually provide it to your logger. And so that's a way to then associate logs across all your services uh, quickly and easily. So here's an example in uh, tracing implementation. So this is using the Zipkin Lite package. And again, we're using Fastify. Uh, it's also going to use the, the node fetch package as well. So we instantiate a Zipkin connection. And so we specify you know, the, the host that we're going to send this Zipkin information to, uh, Zipkin being a, uh, a tracing implementation. Uh, we also have to name the service, um, keep track of the service's port, as well as the service's IP. And finally, we instantiate the Fastify server and then add two uh, hooks to it. So the first one happens when a request is received, and the second happens when the response is being sent. And so those two uh, middleware are doing things like, you know, keeping track of the start time of the request, uh, generating a request ID, and then finally transmitting all that information to the central Zipkin server. Now, here's an example of us instrumenting the application itself. And so what we're doing is we're adding a route in the application. And so when the user gets a widget, this route ends up being called. So the first thing that's happening here is that the request ID is logged. Uh, and this is just a way to show how you can access that request ID. Uh, ideally, you would have middleware that then takes that request ID and then attaches it um, to the request logger uh, so that you can use that throughout the request. Um, this code also generates uh, or sets the name of the request, in this case, to get widget. And that's used later for reporting. And finally, we have you know perhaps a bunch of other code happens within the application throughout the request, but we get to a point where we're ready to make an outbound request. So the first thing we do is we prepare the Zipkin request. Uh, we also have access to this URL. And then we make a fetch call. And so the fetch call is mostly the same, except that we specifically have to provide the headers that are generated from this Zipkin request preparation. Once the request is complete, we, take a, we, we call this complete method and we pass in the HTTP method and the URL. And then finally, we finish the request. So there's a few different tracing solutions out there. Uh, the one we just looked at is Zipkin. Another popular open source alternative is Jaeger. And so these are two that you can run um, self-hosted. And both of those tools are able to follow something called the open telemetry uh, specification. Uh, which is a way to sort of define, you know, what are the headers that are passed around? What kind of timing information are you tracking? How is it sent to the central server, et cetera. Uh, the Datadog company also has an APM product as well. And New Relic is another popular tracing solution. So what does tracing actually look like? Uh, well, with Zipkin, you end up getting a, you know, pretty nice hierarchy. So this is a screenshot taken from the Zipkin website. So we can see on the left that we have a hierarchy of the services. So we have like the routing service, beneath that is memcache, Yelp main, et cetera. Next to that, we have a nice timeline that shows the actual time that it takes. Uh, and so using that timeline, we're able to see that the overall request you know, happens at the top. It took about 131 milliseconds. And then different operations below that took more time. And so the depth of this graph represents the depth of the uh, request chain uh, within your application. On the right, we see some metadata annotations uh, that are tracked as well. And so Datadog APM is uh, another alternative tool. 
So this one looks a bit more like the perhaps the performance timeline that you might see in the browser as you're measuring your JavaScript uh, efficiency. So in this case, the, the x-axis also represents time, but the y-axis sort of loosely represents you know, different things that are happening within the application. And so uh, the Datadog APM is a nice way to automatically instrument your code base. So all these different things that are displayed here are automatically captured from the application. And this right here is an actual live screenshot of a lob.com request. You see that it took uh, about maybe 850 milliseconds. And so I've zoomed into this graph, but before here, we're doing things like downloading uh, like a postcard resource from a customer. So we can also see things like the Postgres requests are made, a uh, call to AWS is made, et cetera. And so the Datadog APM, it sort of automatically modifies the application and passes along things like headers, which are then sent to deeper services. All right, so that's the talk. Um, feel free to follow me on Twitter. Um, the presentation is available at this URL here. And of course, this content was taken from distributed systems with Node. But feel free to hit that URL if you'd like more information.